Woo! What's going on, everybody? Obstacles the opportunity. Everyone in loves the hate Tesla. Let's get it. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm gonna be reading from a book from Walter Isaac. I don't know if you guys know him, but this book is very interesting. This is gonna be the first one of Tesla stories because when I'm reading this book, I find things to be massively interesting because most people don't know about Tesla, and I think this book does a good good coverage about tesla and certain things that happens with elon pertaining to the company so we're going to start off on this chapter it's called manufacturing and it's talking about tesla from 2010 to 2013 okay so we're going to get in it and at first we're going to be talking about fremont factory because most of you guys don't know where the actual factory came from the first factory that tesla has today so i think this is going to be very interesting so let's get into it and it says fremont beginning with technology and globalization in the 1980s a relentlessly driven by cost-cutting CEOs and their activist investors, American companies shut down domestic factories and offshore manufacturing. Now, a lot of you normies talk about all the jobs going overseas, right? A lot of people talk about it today. All the jobs are in China. There's not enough jobs in America. Every time people talk about it, it's basically... A sad story. So let's see what's going on. And it, the trend accelerated in the early 2000s when Tesla was getting started between 2000 and 2010, the U.S. lost one third of its manufacturing jobs. And by sending their factories abroad, American companies saved labor costs, but they lost the daily feel for the ways to improve their products. So, I mean, they lost money and it was a fantastic day for capitalism. But when it came down to innovation, they were dealing with problems. Were they able to innovate as easy? Nope. All right, cool. So that was the downfall. That was an L. That was a con. The pro was cutting down costs, but a con was being able to innovate. And so Musk, Musk bucked this trend. So Musk decided to do something different, guys. All right. Largely because he wanted to have tight control of the manufacturing process. He believed that designing the factory to build a car Quote, the machine that builds the machine was as important as designing the car itself. Tesla design manufacturing feedback loops gave it competitive edge and allowed it to innovate on a daily basis. So keeping the manufacturing close allowed the company to innovate easily. That makes it that sounds like it makes sense, right? And an Oracle founder, Larry E., and then joined only two corporate boards, Apple and Tesla. And he became close friends with Jobs, that's Steve Jobs for you guys, and Musk. And he said they both had beneficial cases of accept, or obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, is one of the reasons for their success, because they obsessed on solving a problem until they did. So they were obsessed with solving a problem until they did. They continuously attempted to try to solve a problem. This is Steve Jobs and Elon Musk, okay? And then what sets them apart is that Musk, unlike Jobs, applied that exception not just to the design of a product, but also to the underlying science, engineering, and manufacturing. Steve just had to get the conception and software right but the manufacturing was outsourced. So that's interesting. This is what um, Larry is saying. And Elon took on the manufacturing, the materials, the huge factories. Jobs loved to walk through Apple's design studio on a daily basis, but he never visited the factories in China. Musk, in contrast, spent more time walking assembly lines than he did walking around the design studio. The brain strain of designing the car is a tiny compared to the brain strain of designing the factory, he says. So this is a difference that he sees in Steve Jobs with Musk, right? He's saying Steve Jobs spent a lot of time in the factory, or excuse me, the design part, designing it and messing with the software. But Elon does that, and he also masters in the manufacturing and the engineering of the process, which is a harder process, right? Steve Jobs wasn't walking the assembly line because shout out to Foxconn, that's who assembles their cars, right? So this is a big difference. So shout out to Elon Musk for doing it. 
and Must Approach came together in May 2010 when Toyota was looking to sell the factory that it once had shared with GM in Fremont factory in California. So at this point, Toyota and GM shared a factory. It's the Fremont factory that we have today. This is Tesla that has it now, right? And on the fringe of Silicon Valley in an hour and a half drive from Tesla's headquarters in Plato Alto, it must invited Toyota's president to the Los Angeles home and drove him in the Roadster. So he took him in the car. There's, this was the Roadster that they made, the first one, guys. And he was able to get mothballed factory, which at one point had been worth $1 billion for $42 million. In addition, Toyota agreed to invest $50 million in Tesla. God dang! Elon Musk with a dub. <laughs> Bro, a factory used to be worth $1 billion. He bought it for $42 million. Man, major flex. And when redesigning the factory, Musk put the cubicles for the engineer right on the edge of the assembly lines. And so they could see the flashing lights and hear the complaints whenever one of the design elements caused a slowdown. Musk often correlated the engineers to walk up and down the lines with him. And his open desk was in the middle of it all with no walls around him and then had a pillow underneath. And so he could spend the night when he wanted to. The month after Tesla bought the factory, Musk was able to take the company public. The first IPO by an American car maker since Ford's in 1956. Let me say that again, guys. The first IPO by an American car company since Ford's in 1956. I mean, come on. That's not a good flex. That's not something that's important. The first IPO by an American car maker. Come on. He traveled with his wife at the time and his two sons to ring the bell at the NASDAQ stock exchange on Times Square. By the end of the day, the stock market had fallen, but Tesla stock had rose more than 40%, providing $266 million in financing for the company. That evening, Musk flew to west of the Fremont factory so he could make a toast, and he said, fuck oil. He said, <laughs> and Tesla was almost dead at the end of 2008. Now, just 18 months later, it had to become America's hottest new company. Amazing. Man, this is this, this is ridiculous. Now, I'm going to stop it here. I want to keep this video short. So this is just a brief story about manufacturing and specifically Fremont factory. I find it massively interesting that a lot of American companies took their jobs and took their factories overseas and they offshored manufacturing which was good for them that was a pro that was a fantastic day for capitalism right a fantastic day for capitalism but you normies know lost a lot of jobs right and we lost our ability to innovate especially with so many third parties right like you don't control the manufacturing lines in china you don't control foxconn but you can control your own factories if you vertically integrate and so this is something that must has proved itself and so he wanted to build a machine that builds the machine. And he did. He created a feedback loop, which gave competitive edge and allowed for innovation on a daily basis. And this shows on a video that I would drop about the structure of the body and how Tesla continues to design pieces out of the process, right? He reduces the process and the products that are required. The first cut was around 60. The second cut was around 300 pieces. So he's taking around 360 to 400 pieces out of the process line. That's pieces that need to be inventoried, they need to be shipped, they need to be controlled, quality control, like logistics, administration, transportation, import and export of said materials. It's ridiculous. So, I mean, when it comes down to Tesla, it, it's creating a process that's more effective and efficient, not by brown beating suppliers or maybe going to a new country, no longer China, but now moving to indonesia or thailand or cambodia but they just design the product to be more effective and efficient and unlike steve jobs which a lot of people give a lot of laurels to steve jobs was good at walking around the design studio and the software on a daily basis but elon musk does that but what he also does is he walks the assembly line 
right? He creates the factory, right? So he knows the engineering, not only the design and the software, but also the engineering. And he works with them. He sleeps under his desk, guys. He sleeps inside the factory. What CEO do you know sleeps inside the factory, right? Is able to purchase a building that was worthless, that had no jobs and people were fired, was worth at one point one billion dollars and he bought it for forty two million dollars and made it into something. And then a little bit of the production quality, it says when the first Model S cars was rolled off the Fremont assembly line in June 2012, hundreds of people, including California Governor Jerry Brown, showed up for the celebration. Many of the workers waved the American flags. Some cried. What had once been a bankrupt factory that had laid off all of its workers now had 2,000 employees and was leading the way in electric vehicle future. Come on, guys. So these are the stories that I'll be telling, and I think that they're very interesting stories about Elon and about everything that he's done for Tesla, and it will give a little bit more understanding to the company and not just the guy that you see on Twitter not what you see in the media, but a better understanding about how this great American company is bringing back jobs to the USA and making America great again, in my opinion. Shout outs to everybody. Thank you for watching another episode. I'll see you on the next one. It will actually be from this book. I'm going to continue to read stories of Tesla or stories on Elon. Everyone hates Tesla. Shout outs to everybody. Again, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. And Send it to somebody who wants to make America great again. Because as far as I'm concerned, that's what Elon was doing. <laughs>